wine and pheromone. Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going in, I'm going to show you guys how to do this really gorgeous set of nails. So the first thing you see me picking up is my Pana. It's a um, size 16 Kalinsky brush. And then I'm also going in with the Nail House Glitter in the color HBIC. And I picked up an Orange Crush uh, glitter color that's orange, which I mixed up myself. And then you also see me going in with the Glam and Glitz. It is the color Popsicle. And I'm going in with Legally Blonde, which is a glow in the dark color that I made. And then I'm also going in with the Mia Secret Clear Acrylic Powder along with the Mia Secret Cover Pink. And then I also see me picking up, um, there's going to be some stars and some butterflies I'm going to use. And I got um, those items of AliExpress and I'll be sure to leave the link down below to everything that you saw me uh, show you all in the first clip. And then also for my monomer, I'm using the Mia Secret monomer. Um, and I just have it in this little dappin dish or glass that I got from my local nail supply store. And then as you guys can see, I did appreciate these nails off camera. If you want to see um, how I shape these stiletto nails, definitely check out my last video as um, I went ahead and gave you, gave you guys a detailed shaping video in the last one. And so now I'm going in on the pinky nail with the orange crush. And honestly, I'm just taking like one bead of that. Um, I picked up some clear on my brush and then I went in and picked up um, some more of the glitter color and I just placed it down. And now I'm just patting it around. And then just to give you guys a little info about future videos, so I do plan to make some videos um, regarding like nail tech business, things like how to price your nails, um, where to buy your materials, how to do marketing things like business cards, loyalty cards, um, also like posters. And then aside from that, I also want to show you guys how to um, basically build your website and help you um, create a way for clients to sort of book with you. So yes, definitely stay tuned for that. And if you didn't know, I am now on TikTok, so definitely be sure to go ahead and head over to that and follow me on there as long as on Insta. Okay everyone, and now on this nail, I'm going to go in with the Popsicle First by Glam and & Glitz. And I'm going to place this down first because it's like the more pigmented color. And then I'll follow up with the Legally Blonde color that I made, which basically is just a really um, translucent uh, pink. And it's a fairly like, baby-ish light pink. It's not anything like too crazy, so yeah. And then I think it creates like a nice color transition. It kind of mutes that um, super bright like neon orangey color down just a little bit. So yeah. And you guys see what I'm talking about as uh, I finish up this nail. But yeah, so I'm really just marbling it. Um, and honestly, don't go in with your beads like too dry. Kind of just keep them fairly um, on the wetter side. Not like to the point where it's running everywhere, but you kind of do want to have it a little wet. Okay, and then here on this nail, we're essentially doing the same thing we did on the last nail. The only difference is this is an ombre nail. So I'm only going to do it like kind of right where the line of the tip stops. Um, and then you all can see. So yeah, that's about like the last place I placed down the color. And then I'm just going in with the pink. And you kind of just want to build it up to your desired like um, color or pigmentation. And then yeah. That's basically all we're doing on this now. Okay, y'all, and so for real quick for this now, we're just going to be doing a uh, ombre nail, and I'm going to be using the Glam and Glitz here. It's the popsicle color, which I think you guys know the colors that I'm using at this point. <laughs> I'm probably just going to stop saying the names. But yes, yeah, so I'm going in with that, and we're going to basically put it like right where the tip stops, and we did the last one. 
And a trick is you, whenever you're doing ombres, you def, especially with darker colors, you want the area, as you're getting towards the cuticle area of the nail, you kind of want the color to be less pigmented. So that when you go to ombre, you don't have too hard of a time like trying to get the cover color and the um, colored acrylic color that you're using. Like, you don't want to have too hard of a time trying to make it the ombre seamless. So yeah, just tip. Okay y'all, and on this nail, the first color I'm pressing down again is that popsicle color. And I'm just going to pat it down um, and then basically pat it down towards the tip. And once I've placed that bead down, I'm going to go in and pick up some orange crush. And I'm going to spread that around on the very like bottom of the tip. And you'll see me doing that in just a few, like right now. And then after I do that, I'm, I'm going to go back in and pick up another bead of the popsicle. I'm going to add that back towards the cuticle area. And then just fade that down a little bit more into the glitter. Okay, and now here you all see me going in with the Mia Secret, the cover pink. And at first I placed a bead down right there where um, the, like the natural nail and then that cover, I mean the colored acrylic meat. And so I'm just starting my, like to fade it down right into there. Um, and you don't want to work with, whenever you're doing um, ombre, I don't really suggest working with like really, your acrylic really runny. Just because you kind of want the color to stay put, um, except for when you get like right there, like towards the. What am I trying to say, like guys? Like when, until you get like right there towards like the the tip where it's ombre. That like you want to be able to have it wet enough so that you can move it down, but also like not super wet, so that way it's not like going all over the place. Because otherwise you'll just be packing on like acrylic and it's just not going to look cute. And then same thing, just going over here on the next nail with the cover um, powder. And I will say, um, if you're a beginner, you're definitely going to have a little bit of a harder time trying to get ombre, like colors that are super pigmented to ombre well, make it look kind of seamless. Um, I think it's hard for anybody, it just really takes a while to build up that skill and just to keep practicing it. So. Definitely if you're a beginner, don't give up. Just still keep practicing and I'm sure you'll get it. Okay everyone, and real quick right here, you see me going in with the Zule, the nail bling adhesive. Honestly, get you some Zule. If you're going to be a nail tech, you need Zule. Like honestly, Zule, like her nail glue is great for everything. Like I'm gluing down, um, like I'm placing down some glue and I'm using a wax pencil. Um, and I'm going to be picking up the stars and the butterflies that I showed you at the beginning of the video. And I'm just going to be placing those down on the nail. And that's going to go down on the ring finger on both hands and also the thumb, which you all will see. 
So I'm just going to let you guys see my placement and then you'll see me going in with the spray. Essentially I'm just using the Hurry Up the um, Hurry Up Nail Blue Dryer Spray. I'm going to get that at Sally's and yeah I'll also put the link down in the description box for that. But honestly, um, Zulay on her site she has it where you can buy the Mia Secret resin. Um, which I have used that. It works well. But honestly, the Mia Secret, it's usually like 7 to $10. And I got the Hurry Up the um, Spray. And that's like, and the Mia Secrets are like one ounce. But the other, the Hurry Up the Nebula Spray is like way bigger. And it lasts me such a longer, like a long amount of time. But honestly, I just suggest that one. It's like a better, it's better, it's a better bang for your buck. And it's also cheaper than the Mia Secret, the um, Joe Resin Activator Spray. So yeah, definitely check that out and purchase that 110%. It works just fine with the, with the Zule. Okay everyone and for this step I'm going in and now I'm just going to encapsulate the designs on this nail um, with the Mia Secret Clear and also when you go in so this is just a tip whenever you're using cover like color acrylic powder um, you definitely just because it's more expensive colored acrylic is meant to be used sparingly in the same way that you might would use gel like you're not putting on like globs and globs of like gel polish to achieve like a color palette or, or to get your structure because the reality is that colored acrylic although it's cute and everything um, it's not going to offer you the same stability and structure and structure oh my gosh you guys and structure that um, like pink acrylic powder or the um, clear coat powder would and so this is where you want to go in and be building like your apex and um, essentially the rest of the structure of the nail and also just protecting your design so you're kind of doing like two or three things in one and so definitely just turn the nail on um, different like look at the nail from different angles turn the nail um, and look at it from both sides and even like looking straight down the nail and that'll let you know if your apex is where it should be and that whole sort of thing honestly another tip is if you press down on uh, like the fatty part of your finger wherever it is like more like wherever the nail is turning like more like pink at that's kind of where you need to put down your apex 
because that shows you like if something were to happen that's where that stress is going to essentially um, going to be placed in the nail and that's where you want to have that string that so that the nail doesn't break so again just a tip
Okay, you guys, and on to this hand. Essentially, um, design-wise, it's the same thing that's going to be going on. Um, the only difference is, instead of the orange crush color, I'm going in with HPIC from Nail House. And I'm placing that down the pinky nail. Um, and then additionally, whenever I go and do like the marble designs on the ring finger and the middle finger, I'm going to be placing down my, like the pink color is going to be towards the edge of the nail, like so I, further down at the tip of the nail. I'm still placing down the orange color first, but the pink color is going to be placed, like basically, yeah, so towards like the edge of the nail. And you'll see what I'm talking about then. And then also on the index finger, we're going in with the pink as the base color for the ombre and then going over it with the cover pink. And then um, on the thumb, it's the same thing we did on the last nail, um, except I'm using the Legally Blonde color and then also going in with HBIC as my glitter color. And then still putting down the butterflies and the stars. And so just another side note, so um, which we didn't really notice this until after everything was all said and done. But on her middle finger, the nail is a little bit more crooked. And the reason for that being is, um, which I mean, okay, so I'm a firm believer in like, sometimes it's the client's nail, other times it can be like, you know, just improper placement. But she had actually broke her middle finger on um, from her last set and it cracked kind of far down. And the way that her nail was grown out, it looked like one part of the nail was a little bit higher up than the other, but she still wanted her to get her nails done and she didn't want to do forms. So um, I kind of just placed the nail as best as I could, but still making sure I'm offered like stability and coverage of that nail so that way nothing would happen to it. Um, so that's really important. Um, but aside from that, yeah, so you can see the nail is a little bit crooked, but I did uh, do my best shaping wise and that whole sort of thing. And honestly, when the nail is like straight down, you have like doing day-to-day -day stuff you really can't tell I think you can kind of just tell because she just had her hand like sticking out like this in the video but yeah you guys so we did know and the client was okay with it um but I will say something else I did learn because I did just take a basically a sculpting class and I'm going to tell you that the best way to place the nail tip is and this was so clever I like never thought about this this is why you guys have to really like invest in um take additional classes but she was saying that always line up the form or the nail tip with the second knuckle on the nail and that is held true because honestly it's like I've been practicing doing that each time I did that like the nail has always been straight from that point on so yeah you guys just dropping knowledge and I'll probably show you guys like, how to do proper tip placement in another video but yeah so honestly that's definitely what I suggest you do
Okay you guys, and so right here you can see me going in with this pink color, um, Lily Blonde just a little bit more just because I wasn't necessarily happy with the color payout and I wanted the pink to show a little bit more. It looked like a little too nude for my liking. So yeah, I definitely did just go back in with that pink um, just to brighten it up so I make it a little bit more vibrant. And y'all, let me just go in and say real quick, this nail was my favorite nail of the whole set, I think. Like, I don't know what it was, it was something about the way that glitter was sitting on top of that pink. And then with the butterflies added in, y'all, it, it just did something to me. It just, I don't know, it just set it off in all the right ways. But yeah. Okay y'all, and now it's time to go in and shape these nails. So essentially, um, I did go ahead and encapsulate the other hand off camera. I just didn't feel like you guys need to see that. Um, but basically, now I'm going in with a 80-80 uh, no, grit nail file. And I like to use these whenever I'm going in and shaping the nail with the acrylic just because it gives me that super crisp shape that I love. And it really cuts down the filing time. So yeah, so basically you guys, I'm going in at a anything yeah it's like a 45 degree angle and I only like go at a 90 degree angle to the nail whenever I am trying to like focus on one specific spot but you'll see me just going like shaping up and down the nail which sorry you guys I'm out of view for some of this um I think I tried to figure that out as I was going along this is like one of my very first videos of doing the nails so I'm definitely going to try to work on my uh, camera angles, but I think you guys get the point. And honestly, if you lay your acrylic down right, you really shouldn't have to go in and do that much redefining of the shape uh, because you should be able to keep your shape for most of it if you're laying it down right and keeping it neatly and um, not allowing it to spill too far over the sides.
Okay everyone, and now it's time to go in and um, shape up the nail with the e-file. And so essentially for my dust collector, in this video I'm using the McCart dust collector. Since then I was finally able to splurge and get my um, Valentino dust collector, which you guys see in the boxing and product review of that coming later on. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but essentially moving on, I am using a fine a uh, carbide bit and it's a flat top and it's a small barrel. I don't like the large barrel ones. I feel like they're so hard to get into anything with using those. So yeah, I just don't suggest using them. And then real quick, I just want to come in and say, so with this nail, you can see that all my side walls are filled. There's not any empty spots in my side wall. That's super important because if there are, you'll damage the client's natural nail every time. And I'm not, when you're doing this, you don't want to like angle the carbide bit down into like because you'll cause a ring of fire in the nail. And you also don't want to apply too much pressure. As I'm filing this here, I'm going on a speed of about 10. That's honestly all I use anytime when I like finish filing in there with the e-file. Um, so yeah, you really don't need to go in with anything super intense or heavy because you're liable to file down the nail too flat and get rid of your apex. And if you again, if you place your acrylic right, all you really should have to do is go around the um, cuticle area. But I always do just like turn the nail on all the sides see if there's any like lumps or bumps when you get out. And then I also take my thumb and I just run it across the nail. Now, if you aren't wearing gloves, I don't suggest you run your finger across the nail just because you may place oils back onto that nail. Um, and you really don't necessarily want to do that, but I mean, hey, teach your own. Um, but yeah, but you really should be using gloves just so that way you don't get end up with contact dermatitis because you are using um, the acrylic a lot throughout the day, especially if you're doing nails all day long. And you as a nail tech, you don't want to be exposed to contact during the tech because it's, it's not fun. Um, this kind of stuff occurred. I've personally never gotten it because, again, I do wear gloves. And honestly, that's one thing they should tell you in nail school, you should be wearing gloves. Also, and then real quick, just to um, go in and follow up on a couple of things I said. So I said I'm using it on a speed of 10. Really, I mean, so like I have the Melody Susie drill. Which is linked down below in the description box, guys. So again, check that out. But um, I'm using it on a speed of 10,000. Um, you know the RPMs or the KRPMs, and so 10 is what it says on the digital display. But we all know like that's in um, the proper rotations, um, which I think is RPM or KRPM. I can't remember off the top of my head, you guys. But I'll let you know. Um. So yeah, and then like I was saying. Also, if you look at your e-file bit, there's a couple of different zones, and um, Young Nails has a really good video on that, so I'll probably try to link that down below in the description box as well, but I'll explain it to my best, abil my best ability here. So I am going in, and so the bottom part of the bit where it's like flat at the top, and that I'm using to go around the, co the um, cuticle area the most. That's the part that you really want to use to go around the cuticle area. You shouldn't be using that like part anywhere else on the nail. You want to use the belly of the bit, like when you go down the nail, and you also want to go from side to side motions. Um, so you want to, if you start on the right side, you should end up on the left side, and then pick it up. You don't want to drag it back and forth across the nail, like left, right, left, right, left, right without ever picking it up because it's going to happen is the bit is going to rotate around the client's nail and it's going to scare you and it's going to scare the client um, and then you're going to be looking it's going to be kind of awkward and your client's going to be you don't know what you're doing so yeah definitely just be careful with that that's happened to me a couple times before I realized how to properly e-file so yeah just take my word for it y'all don't do it
Okay, so real quick, I'm coming in with a dust brush and um, don't you worry guys, I do clean my dust brushes. I do have several of this dust brush and I clean it before use um, on my clients. And so yeah, and so now I'm going in with a buffer block, which I got this from a local nail supply store. I'm going to try and find a decent buffer block um, or whatever from somewhere else that I can link this to because I actually do need to buy some more buffer blocks. So I'll be sure to leave a link down below to one that I, I did end up liking. So yeah. And this si this buffer block, it has two sides. So one is more coarse and one is like a fine, like, like kind of like a smoothie file. Like, I don't know if you guys ever, like it's like a sm one that smooths a nail out. So the side that is smoother, I'm using that on the top of the nail, and then the side that's more coarse, I'm going using that under the bot under under the nail, basically just to clean up any uh, like strays or like any like stuff hanging on from after me filing initially and um, filing with the acrylic on the nail. Okay y'all, so before I start this step, I always wipe down the table with like a disinfecting wipe or something like that. So like one of the little Clorox wipes, just to remove the dust from the table because we are going to go ahead and apply our gel top coat. And I went ahead and sprayed her nail down with some 70% uh, alcohol. And I just uh, wiped that off with my paper towel, essentially just to get up the dust that was on the nail. And I'm just showing you I'm going in with my D&D. Um, gel top coat it's a no wipe version and which I did also purchase the Valentino no wipe top coat recently because it has such great reviews um, the D&D is okay like the D&D gel polish is okay I feel like there's better ones out there because the consistency isn't always great on these polishes and honestly I don't know sometimes this um, top coat it can leave like little holes like in the gel uh, if it, like, some, it just sometimes it just doesn't cure well so yeah, you guys, I don't know, like I suggest it because it's cheap and it's like it, it's better than most, but I also am going to try out the Valentino and let you guys know what I think about that, but yeah. So I'm just going in and placing that down, um, and then I also did in my little dappin' dishes over to the side, I put some acetone in there and I have a little cleanup brush, it's rose gold and I got that from Aliexpress and I just use that to go around the nail and clean up any like any of my gel polish uh, to clean up anything that got is around the nail which is what you see me doing here in this clip and then also you saw me um, show the young nails it's the rose cuticle oil and I do like to use that around the cuticle area and um, that's just how I finish off the nail after the gel has cured and y'all I know y'all see that gel just applying to the matte like that acrylic and I think it just looks so pretty like I always love this part because it just shows like all the work that you did like I thought it looked good at matte y'all but no like this it looks bomb with the um, gel top coat and you'll see it on the other hand too which I love the other, how the other hand looks as well Okay, and then just so y'all know how long it's been since I did this set, um, it's been well over a month now, and her set is still on, it's still popping, no lifting. Um, I'll try to get a picture of it so that I can um, upload it to my Instagram. But yeah, you guys, so yeah, my sets typically last a fairly long time, especially depending on the person and how they upkeep their nails. Um, and I have since then changed my prep around a little bit and other things I do just because I've had more time to invest into learning more about nails and trying new techniques and things like that so yeah you guys definitely check out um my upcoming videos because i'm going to be dropping so much knowledge for you guys and also um i don't know if i said it before but for this top coat i'm just putting it in my um uv 
uh, LED lamp and I'm just carrying it for 60 seconds and I'll be sure to leave the link to my uh, gel lamp that I'm currently using down below. And then I always just go in and apply the cuticle oil right around the cuticle and I just like to rub that in. I try not to rub it in on the nail um, per se because I don't want it to like mess up how shiny the gel top coat looks. But I like to do it like that because, you know, as you know, her hands were looking kind of ashy just because um, she had also had to soak off that day. And, um, yeah. And so these nails did glow in the dark. So I'm just showing you that I'm charging them with the lamp. And I just have them sitting on top of the diamond here. And they glow so much more intense in person. I feel like the camera does not do it justice, y'all. Like, they glow so intense in person. And so, yeah, there you have it. See you guys in the next one.